Please don't make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the Small Business University. My name is Kelly Leonard and I will be your host for this event. In addition to that, I am the CEO of Taylor Leonard Corporation. Each month in collaboration with Montgomery Community Media, our amazing sponsor, as well as um, Mid-Atlantic Federal Credit Union, we bring you this event to help you to expand your business, give you an opportunity to network, collaborate, and share best practices. Thank you for joining us through the live stream. In addition, we have a wonderful studio of individuals that are here to learn some amazing new information that's gonna be designed to take all of our businesses to the next level. And joining us is Carrie Shane. Carrie is a principal owner of Sassy Agency. And, and from her presentation, you'll see she puts the sassy in sassy. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Ms. Carrie Shane. Thank you very much, Kelly and Mark, uh, who wasn't uh, seen on camera, for those of you in the viewing audience. Um, really excited to be here today. I'm so glad that we have such a, a full studio here. Um, I would like to do a shout out to my business partner, whose name you will see here. Those of you in the room can actually turn around and look at her, she'll wave. Those of you on, in the viewing audience may not be able to see her. I'm not quite sure if the camera people can capture her, but she is the other half of Sassy Agency. We are sassy, we are an acronym, but we are very sassy. Um, I'm also a pacer. I've been told that I can only move certain, uh, to a certain area because otherwise I will create feedback and I will hurt everyone's ears. In any case, uh, you have had a chance now to read um, our mission, but I will just quickly tell you that we are all about marketing, public relations, and social media. As a concept, we call it the trifecta. I will go into that in a bit, uh, but Julie and I work very, very hard for small and medium-sized businesses to get them the attention that they need and to help them create the platforms that they deserve. So as I said, we are an acronym and we stand for Strategy, Accountability, Synergy, Sustainability, and E-Commerce. We are in transition as you all should be constantly. You should be updating your brand constantly, updating your platform constantly. So that E over time is transitioning into engagement. Engagement is very important when it comes to a transparent business and being able to talk to your customer, your potential customer in the world of social media. So we believe that every business is different, by the way, and we believe that the question that you have to ask yourself and your customers is what matters to you. Today's presentation is really about why social media is not a marketing strategy, a marketing plan. You have to understand why businesses need, have to create, businesses need to create a simple to implement strategy that incorporates not just social media, but also PR and marketing concepts. So let's just talk simply about what social media is. It is real time breaking news. It is amazing how our world is really in truly its own industrial revolution, if you will. I think that in, in, in the 23rd century, they'll look back in time historically and say, what happened at this time that we are all now living in was truly an industrial revolution of, of itself. So this is just a little piece of a snapshot, a screenshot that I took the other day when I created this PowerPoint presentation about how I learned news from my Twitter account. And it was uh, the, the story that was breaking at the time through Hillary Howard, who I listened to on WTOP. She's a news reporter on WTOP. And it was some breaking news that, that, that CBS was breaking and that she was retweeting from some of her colleagues on WTOP. So the breaking news at that time was the fact that one of the people in the prison had helped the, uh, the two, I usually use the term gentlemen, but they don't deserve that word, um, br a break out of the prison in New York. So social media, it's where trends come alive. In my childhood, that was a number sign. And then it was also a pound sign, right? Now it's a hashtag. This hashtag is actually how our children speak, right? Our children speak in hashtag. Hashtag, you're silly. Hashtag, you embarrass me mother. I mean, this is really the vernacular. And we have to catch up to the vernacular because they are our future. The, the millennials and the younger generation will eventually become our sustainability model. So the hashtag is very important. And when it comes to doing your own social media and your own PR and your own ability to say, this is who I am, the best way to do it is to ride the trend wave, right? Like, like a surfer, you find that wave. So if, you're, if what's trending, and this is literally a snapshot in time of what was trending when I took the screenshot, 
If you can ride the trend wave, ride the twen trend wave. Sometimes it's something that we all really know and care about. Okay, and I will couch this in the fact that we know that Jeb Bush announced. We may not have known what Bud Black and why the, they fired me is trending, but in any case, they are. So if you're an employment agency, go and look what hashtag they fired me means, and maybe you can ride that trend wave. Social media is a platform to present your brand. And social media is a place to practice interactive self-PR. This is just an example of a client who had who had um, financial compliance, compliance issues. So their company was actually not allowed to, uh, to have real-time um, postings on social media. They needed a two-month lead. Things needed to be approved. So we were doing their social media announcement. He, uh, this gentleman was actually testifying before the Senate Finance Committee on the ABLE Act, which I'm happy to report passed in December of 2014. And we were posting in real time, this is just a snapshot of one of the posts, about his um, testimony. And, and what happened during that was a whole bunch of interaction on the side, I, I had to cut and paste, um, interaction about the fact that he was testifying and that was part of the engagement tool. Social media is a place to have conversations, viral conversations with your customers and your potential customers. You, I think some of you, those in the my age group and older, will remember the Fabergé commercial from the 1970s uh, she told two friends, she told two friends, and so on and so on and so on. Quite frankly, whoever created the concept of social media was probably watching that commercial and realizing that it's the Fabergé commercial. Social media literally is, and she told two friends, and she told 500 friends, and she told one million friends. I mean, that's really what's going on here. So this is a conversation, again, a snapshot of a conversation about some of the things that I was tweeting and engaging with some of the people that I know on Twitter. In fact, uh, one of them is the Mid-Atlantic Federal Credit Union. Shout out about the fact that I'm speaking here. So, But social media is only as good as your brand. And this is where we talk about how specifically social media is not a marketing plan, right? So social media is only as good as your brand. And social media is only as good as your PR strategy. Because you have to be talking about something important. And you want to be talking about your marketing platform. And you want to be talking about your PR strategy. Because otherwise, you're just saying happy pizza day. And unless you happen to own a pizza restaurant or an Italian restaurant or some maybe there's nutrition and lycopene and the tomato sauce, you know, unless that's your platform, shouting happy pizza day is really not going to help your business in any particular way. And that's because social media may be a real-time tool, but it's only a tool, okay? And it happens to have viral potential. It is a tool, just like a business card is a tool. Just like, this is a poster, it looks really tiny right there. Just like a poster is a tool, it's collateral. So if you think of social media as collateral, and you think of social media as extreme short form journalism, right? It's not just, let me say something because I know I need to say something. It's your headline news. It's you talking about your business and saying something journalistically and saying something important that helps you advance whatever it is that you do as a business person. So social media needs to be part of a bigger marketing strategy, one that includes brand marketing and sales initiatives, PR and outreach campaigns. Social media, like all of these, are part of a marketing toolbox. Social media has just made that toolbox a little more modern and forced businesses to be more transparent. So social media can be a little scary. Remember, millennials were raised in this concept of social media. They expect to live online. I was out to dinner with my daughter the other night. She spent the entire time taking selfies. Okay, selfies, pictures of the food. Let me tell everybody what food I'm eating. Pictures of me and my friend and, and, and different facial expressions. This is the way they live their lives. So for sustainability reasons, as business people, this is the way you have to run your business because one day, even if your target market right now isn't a millennial, one day they are going to grow up and they will become the target market. So, one of my favorite people on social media. It's why you cannot forget what this guru says. The goal is not to be good at social media. The goal is to be good at business because of social media. So never forget that. If you want, I love him. I think he says a lot of great things. Consider following Jay Bear on Twitter. Consider asking him on LinkedIn if you can link in with him. He's really, really very, very good at what he does. He's the He's also like a guy, Kawasaki. They actually have very differing beliefs. 
I like Jay a lot. Okay, so social media should be part of your strategic business matrix. I like to say that marketing, public relations, and social media are best friends for life. Okay, let's just go with the millennial expression, right? BFFs for life. I actually wrote a Huffington Post piece and really actually did say best friends for life in this piece. But it's very important. PR used to be a moment in time in the 20th century. Social media has made PR an, a never-ending concept. It's no longer a moment. It is something that can live forever and ever. So we talk about the trifecta. I'm sorry that it's cut off at the top of the screen. We talk about the trifecta truly, the concept of, and if you could visualize, I'm PR. This is marketing. This is social media. We're walking down the street holding hands. We're best friends for life. So everything that you've worked so hard on to create your business, that marketing concept, that branding your company, coming up with your message, coming up with your differentiation, your who's your target market, your logo, your tagline, your mission, then, you, of course, you build a website, right? That's a 21st century tool. Do you have a call to action on your website? All of these things, all of the collateral that you come up with, your promotional plan, then maybe you do market research to find out really who is your target market. All of these things are so important to marketing. And PR, PR is taking all those intense marketing efforts that you've worked so hard on and telling the public through the media about yourself. That's the idea behind PR, right? Getting the media to tell your story. And then, of course, social media. And by the way, social media is not just what we hear about, right? Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter and LinkedIn, Instagram, which wouldn't even fit on here, and Yik Yak, which is new, and you may not know about it, but if your target market is not college students and a little bit younger, then it may not be something that's important to you. But social media is about blogging. It's about writing blog, even vlogging, right? And it's about something we call social comments, which is commenting on articles that have already been written and posted online. So we like to say that it's very important to take that vision, that marketing vision that you have, and really figure out a strategy through PR and social media to implement what it is that you need to implement, to talk about to the world virally through social media and through the media itself through public relations. So spend time building your brand. But as we said, the world has become very transparent. So the world can actually redefine for you what your brand is. And that's dangerous and scary. Not dangerous and scary in the true definition of the word, but you need to own your brand. And you need to make sure that all of these millennials, and I have nothing against millennials, by the way, okay, I, I birthed millennials. But the fact is, is that you need to constantly be telling your story so that your brand is not hijacked by somebody else or another business or, or whatever it may be. So part of that is getting the media to help you out and getting social media to help you out so you can constantly say what it is and who you are. So you also need to have an SEO plan, right? So sometimes you can do that very organically through public relations. Quite frankly, the fact is, is when you get an article in the paper or when you are on um, in the television media or, or radio, the search engines that all these media outlets have are very, very strong. So that's part of your SEO plan. So the fact is, is that PR and social media and marketing all are already part of your SEO plan. You don't have to spend millions of dollars to make sure that your message gets out there so that you become Googleable. And I say Googleable in that you know keyword search and that's just my vernacular for it. So one of the greatest reasons to have a PR plan, by the way, in the 21st century is to keep your, keep your competition out of the limelight. Because the media is going to be writing a stories. They have evergreen stories. It's 24-7 news market. They need you. They need to know your story. But the fact is, if they're going to be writing a story because there's a trend or because Let's say it's Valentine's Day, so they have to talk about Valentine's Day. They're going to have to interview somebody. So make sure it's you, because if it's not you, it's going to be your competitor. Use social media as a crowdsourcing tool, OK? Start within your own little world, and then grow it out from there. And then finally, create invaluable relationships with your customers. Engage with them on social media. But don't forget about the media itself, because they're your best bet. Again, 24-7 news cycle. They need to talk about something interesting. Make yourselves interesting. So I love this. I mean, I wasn't really a David Hasselhoff fan. Hopefully half of you know who this is. But they, they, MasterCard did this great commercial back in the 70s and 80s. And they talked about concept of pricelessness. 
marketing, public relations, and social media are priceless. It used to just be that PR was priceless. It's hard to measure the success of PR. It's hard to say that if someone read an article about you in the paper and, it, and saved that article for a year, and we're pretty much talking about 60 and above because people younger than that really don't read physical papers anymore. They get their news online. But a year later, they call you and they hire you. It's hard to measure that. An entire year went by. So in any case, just remember, it's priceless, OK? It, it works even if you can't measure it. So really quick case study for you. Um, this is a, I, I use this as a case study because they um, are a small company, brick and mortar. They do not believe in, in online sales. And so it's very, very important to see how they were able to use marketing, social media, and PR together as the trifecta, remember best friends walking down the street together, to really enhance what they needed to enhance. It was a new owner. The company had been around for 30 years. And they really just needed to freshen up. Um, and so the concept was they decided that they wanted to increase three different target markets. After discussing with them, and the target markets were going to be first shoes, OK, kids' shoe store, um, at the athletic market and the fashion market. So the concept was, how do we do that? Well, let's come up with a marketing strategy. So one of the marketing strategies was to create community outreach for free. Let's get the name out there. Let's bring people in and talk about the transition with a psychologist of children going from not being able to be mobile to walking. It is a life change for a parent, right? They're going to be buying that first shoe. So we give them the knowledge and the help through a marketing event. We got PR for it. One of the PR landings that we got was in Parenting Magazine, National Ra Magazine, read by 3 million people, talking about first shoes and fitting first shoes. Right? Remember, this is not an online retailer. People had to come into the store. And then we did shout outs through social media. Remember, social media is not just about, hey, how are you? Happy Pizza Day on Facebook. But it's also about writing blogs. So we wrote blogs. And that trifecta, that marketing and PR and social media strategy, helped increase sales of first shoes. We did the same thing when it came to the uh, fashion market. Okay, We created a huge fashion event um, near the store in the mall. And um, kids were able to walk down a real runway. There was music. It was very, very exciting. We got PR for it. Bethesda Magazine was one of the landings. And shout outs in social media included, these are the hot shoes that are coming out of New York. Okay, Good target market in the Potomac Bethesda region. And then finally, increasing sales in the athletic market, the same concept. We did a, a marketing plan, and it was a promotional event that was for free. We brought in a ortho pediatric orthopedic surgeon, um, as well as a former Harlem, basketball, um, Harlem Globetrotter basketball player who was spinning balls and entertaining the children, while the pediatric orthopedic surgeon was talking about how to stay safe on the field or on the court and whatever it was and what to happen when your child gets, gets injured. We gave a 10% discount, or the store did, and we shouted out about it on social media before and after with video and just with still frame photos. And so they increased the sales of, the tar of, of that market. But the best thing that really happened is after 33 years, they won Best of Bethesda, had never won Best of Bethesda before. Their name was everywhere. They were constantly shouting out about themselves. They were in social media. Their marketing plan was really good. It was community outreach, right? And then all of the PR that comes with winning Best of Bethesda. So we know we're supposed to be in social media. In fact, the stats show us that most small and medium-sized businesses are involved in social media. But the question is, what social media are you supposed to be on? Because it, it takes a lot of time, right? It's exhausting. You can't be everywhere. You need to know where your target market is. So let's do a really quick quiz. And I know that you are not supposed to speak because the studio audience can speak, but you folks at home might not be able to hear them. So I'm going to go through this really quickly to talk with you about where your target market may be hanging out. So again, pop quiz, but no one's allowed to shout the answers out. Just do it in your head. So how many people in the world use Facebook? OK. 1.35 billion. OK. That is a very large amount of people. Again, I am assuming as good business people that you are on Facebook. OK, here are some facts about Facebook, and I'm going to go through this quickly. There are over 15 million brand pages on Facebook. 76% of women who are online are using Facebook. And this is an interesting stat, and this stat is changing constantly. 18 to 29-year-olds are on Facebook. But guess what? So is my age group, and I'm a mother. And guess what? My kids don't want to be hanging out with me. So they're leaving Facebook in droves. And where are they going? They're going to Instagram. So Instagram will be the next great place for business to hang out. We just keep following the kids. They're the trendsetters, right? Follow, I'm coming, I'm coming, OK? So now the other thing about Facebook is my mother, she's on Facebook, OK? Because she wants to stalk her grandchildren. So the fact is, if your target market is over the age of 65, their Facebook use is growing. OK, what adjective? This is just a fun one. 
What adjective was the most used in LinkedIn profiles in 2013 and 2014? Again, answer in your head. The most used adjective was responsible. But so this is really interesting because in 2011 and 2012, the most used word was creative. Just a fun little fact. I am going to tell you right now, and I will not name names, but I am staring at someone right now. You need to engage on LinkedIn. Don't just be on LinkedIn. Get your profile. Get at least 500 links because after 500, it says 500 plus and everybody's impressed, okay? Engage on LinkedIn. Make this your number one tool. It is the best networking system ever known to man. Here are some quick facts. And the fascinating thing about LinkedIn is that in, as opposed to every other social media venue, the numbers are very, very different. Highest usage among the adults, 15 to 60, 50 to 64 year olds, okay? Very different than any other social media venue. This is not where you're saying, I'm sitting and I'm waiting for a plane. This is where you're saying, this is my community outreach this month, okay? This is what I'm doing. This is the PR that I've gotten for my company. What was the first tweet on Twitter and who tweeted that first tweet? Answer in your head, okay? Hopefully some of you got this answer right one of the founders of Twitter, and he basically said what almost everybody else says, which is, I'm setting up my Twitter. A lot of people say, I don't know what to say. Okay, very, very quickly, and this is the whole brand concept. In seven years, if I did the math correctly, you could see all the different ways that Twitter has changed its brand. Okay, so that's very interesting. So don't ever just stop. Keep improving. Okay, so I ask you today, what is your marketing, PR, and social media plan? We ourselves have a lot of them. It's a little spattering of some of the things that we do, including speaking engagements. And do you have a to-do list, okay, for Q3 and Q4? So are you blogging? Do you have a monthly communication tool like e-blasts you know, e and uh, is Constant Contact and MyEmma and all those different ones? Media, do you have an angle to pitch the media? The media wants you, remember. It's not like the 20th century where you had to beg them to talk about you. They need you to feed them story ideas. Social outreach, websites, networking, calendars, Think about all these things. Think about what's going on in the world. Labor Day actually is not even coming up before July 4th, right? July 4th is a great trend because it's going to be talked about. It's a great trend to, to ride if that really works with your business. So set up, your, set up a strategic plan for yourself. Lay it all out so it's easy to implement. And remember, your business is transparent. And ask yourself what matters to you and ask yourself what matters to your customers and your potential, potential customers. Our message, create a brand, differentiate your platform, have fun making a buzz, okay? This should not be torture, it should be fun. And then create a strategic promotional plan for yourself and that was the spreadsheet that I just showed you. So, we are on to Q&A, I think I hit my mark. I'm sorry for all the pacing. As Kelly said, if you have a question, and I hope you do, I love people to ask me questions. I used to be a TV reporter, and um, it's usually that I get to ask the questions, but I love answering questions as well. Um, so if you do have a question, come up to the, um, to the microphone and ask your question so the people at home can hear um, your question. We have a victim. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us your name, because I think it would be nice to know your name. Sure, good morning, my name is Heather Cox. I'm from the Mighty Little Web Shop, and my question is, if I want to get, so I had some success with some PR that I had in a, in a local paper that I told you earlier, the uh, Gazette. Um, and I'd like to get more of that. Do you think that I need a press kit? And if I do, do you have a resource to suggest a book or uh, someone who I should follow to figure out how to create that press kit? Okay, that's a great question. I think everyone in the studio audience heard it. The question is, does she need a press kit? She wants to create... Um, to, she started, got some PR, and she really wants to ride the whole PR bandwagon, which is very exciting, dear to my heart. The fact is, is that PR has really changed since the 20th century. Everybody had a press kit, everybody spent time creating folders, and they took their brand, and they really made it very formal. The world has gotten very informal, right? You go on all these websites, again, created by, by the millennials, and you'll see something like, hey, how's it going? Or um, we use WordPress as our website platform, and it's howdy, Carrie. You know, it's very, very informal now. So the fact is, is that press releases, which big corporations still use, and they sometimes produce one a week, four times a month, that's really kind of been put on the side for really big events. There's a new launch. You've started a new company. The pitch is now 
the way PR people are working. And the pitch basically is, I have a story angle, and I'm going to tell the media this story angle because I think that it would be good for them and that particular media outlet's target market. So it's gotten very informal. And you, of course, you email that to them, right? The expense of creating a media kit is not necessary, especially a physical one. Mm -hmm. Now, what you can do is you can take your brand and you can add it to your email and you can take a, put a short history at the end of your pitch about your company. But the pitch is very specific to that moment in time. It's not, hey, my company exists right about me, right? Mm -hmm. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Okay, absolutely. Yay, another victim. Please start with your name. Good morning, Carrie. I'm Jerome Leonard. Great oh. job. <laughs> I, you have a very famous last name. Yes, I do. <laughs> Inside joke. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> my, my question is for most business owners here, there is a challenge of balance, the balance of responding to the velocity of what you need to do on all these social media platforms, and then the consistency of your brand and, and delivering. You want to spend more time with your customers than social media. So just some guidance on balancing that. It's a really hard balance. And so the question is, how do you spend time with your physical customer who exists already? That's right. And how do you create a sustainability model for yourself by engaging with the potential customer who is out there in the world of social media? That's right. And that's very difficult. And that's why the world is changing. And that's why we're all exhausted. And that's why it's hard to keep up. And the fact is, is that's why we're in, in the middle of an industrial revolution, right? We went from um, walking everywhere, and it took for forever, to horses and, 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 and the buggy, and, right? And then to the car. And life got faster. And then we all moved to the suburbs. And then we had a longer commute. And now we're finding out that if we don't answer someone who sends us an email in 10 minutes, they think either your email got lost or that you're not going to be responsive to them if they become your client. It's difficult. The, the pundits or the, the influencers, for example, on LinkedIn, they say you should spend at least one hour a week engaging with your, with your potential customer. But that's really not enough. But how do, you, how, do you, how do you work your time? I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I go to sleep at 10 o'clock at night. My business partner goes to sleep at 2 o'clock in the morning. And she wakes up at 6 o'clock in the morning. I mean, the fact is, is that you know, we have two hours we're not, where we're not working for our clients. We're exhausting ourselves because the world has gotten way too fast. Um, but we have to do it if we want sustainability. So the answer is don't do everything all at once. Create a stepping stone. Try to create a concept for yourself. I know that on days like today, where I haven't been able to post on social media yet because I left at 6 o'clock in the morning, that I've got to carve out time so that I can take Go to my strategic plan that I have, cut and paste, because I have it written out a month in advance. That doesn't mean that later today, if something is trending, I'm not going to add something to it. But, but pick the venues that are most important to you and your target market and start small and grow from there. LinkedIn is an absolute. You have to be on LinkedIn. If Twitter is really not where your target market is hanging out, put it aside for now. Okay. If Instagram, if you're not a photographer or you're not a designer, just excuse Instagram for now. And really, really figure out where your target market is hanging out in social media. But you have to do it. It's just, I think someone in this room needs to invent time. You know, <laughs> that's the answer. We need a 48-hour day. I Thank hope that you, answered Carrie. your question. Thank Thanks, you. Leonard. Any, uh, any other victims here today? Oh, yay. I love my victims. Please start with your name. Hi, my name is Javel Lane. I'm co-founder of Senat Consulting. My question relates to... Um, how do, you, how do you leverage all these different platforms um, consistently and in a streamlined fashion? We have a blog. Um, I'm the writer of the blog. And I, I try to put, you know, put the blog uh, uh, article on each um, social media platform. But right now I have WordPress and I have a plugin that just kind of puts them on there automatically. My question is, is that the best way to do that? Is there a better way to, to automate that process of getting one message out to every platform or is it better to go to every platform and put it out right. there individually? That's a debatable concept, and that's what Jay and all these different uh, social media gurus argue about all the time. So there are two schools of thought, right? The people who really, really are into social media, they can see, if they, it, because they're in the know, whether you're, whether you're using a cheating tool or not. Mm -hmm. but, but then again, depending upon your target market, the older age group may not know all those cheating tools. So the question is, is it better to get it out there, or is it better to personally 
get it out there and spend the time. Now, the thing about social media is engagement. So it's great to put your blog up there. And don't get me wrong, it's extremely important. And the blog is honestly, it's the best thing that you could do. It gives you SEO, it gives you uh, PR ability, you know, it's your self PR. It's the way the media is going to find you when there's a breaking news story and they Google whatever those keywords were in your blog and it happens to be important for that. They'll pick up the phone and say, I need to interview you, right? So that's so it's so, 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 so important. But the fact is, engagement is important. And again, we live in a world where our customer or our potential customer expects engagement. Just look at the airlines, for example. They do all of their best marketing and crisis communication online. If they don't answer the issue online, it's as if they didn't even answer the issue. So you have to measure your particular situation. You have to measure the return on investment of spending the time engaging and personally putting it out there and having a conversation with people who may retweet or, or favor. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. But you have to figure out how best to do it. And maybe you carve out time you know, right when you wake up in the morning to engage and to say thanks to the people who favored it something. Um, it's hard. it's hard. No easy answer. I wish I had the answer and, and, and a pot of gold, quite frankly. But thank you for your, for your question. It looks like our time is up. The, um, the, 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 be the beautiful woman is coming to probably tell me that my time is up. Am I correct? You are correct. Thank you so much, Carrie. This was awesome. Hopefully everyone <laughs> learned a nugget or two, some things that you can implement immediately inside of your business and you know the other fortunate thing is because her company has so many followers and we being one of them and Mid-Atlantic and MCM that hopefully will make your job a little bit easier when you get back to the office and need to do some social media because we've been talking all about her <laughs> oh, being here and some of the nuggets of wisdom that she's been sharing with us so this has been awesome one of the things that we always do and hopefully everyone had an opportunity see this is why there's benefits to coming into the studio oh, so go. be here next month do I get um, to? Yeah, so we're going to draw a name out. I'm not going to pull my out. card or my business partner's card. If I do, I'll just throw it back in. And so each month, although we've missed a couple months, if you could shout that out. Shannon and Luke's David Hammerski. Oh, okay. yay, David. So David, um, I won't do this. Sometimes I, I will uh, shock the speaker and say, oh. David gets a free month of <laughs> branding and social media services by Sassy Agency. <laughs> But that's not true, right? <laughs> unless you, unless you want to give that to him. David and Julie and I will have a sidebar after this. There you go. But they'll they'll give you a, have a conversation. But also, what I'm going to give to you is um, we'll do a quick assessment of your LinkedIn profile to help nice. you to make sure that you're alive inside of LinkedIn. And as we close, I also wanted to um, make a couple of quick announcements about events that are upcoming that Montgomery Community Media is a sponsor of and for. Um, I know next week, the 24th, if I'm not mistaken, Miss Judy Stevenson. I put a flyer. In. Okay, is the um, Montgomery County Department of Economic Development their annual third annual? Small Business Awards. So it's an amazing event. You definitely want to make sure that you carve out time to be there. Also on July, June 30th, there's a huge event taking place, multi-organizational networking event taking place at the Silver Spring Civic Building um, that's being hosted by a lot of the different chambers are all uh, working together for this large event. So if you have, are a small business owner or entrepreneur, you definitely want to make sure that you tap into that event taking place again at the Silver Spring Civic Building on June 30th. Um, and so I just want to thank everyone for coming this morning and for tuning in as well. Hopefully you learned something new and exciting. I want to thank Mid-Atlantic Federal Credit Union for being an awesome sponsor. I want to thank Mark Walensky for his um, tireless de dedication to the small business community here in Montgomery County. He, um, for those of you that weren't or that may have missed, Mark is moving on and so he's just been a tremendous um, resource to us here at the Small Business University and so I just definitely want to thank him for his contributions. Please make sure to join us again next month as we will have another great speaker, Dwight uh, Daniel, who is a small business advocate and a federal procurement professional will be here and asking and answering the question, are you ready for prime time. So those of you that are looking to do more business in the federal space, or maybe you have clients that are government contractors, make sure that you join us here again next month. So on behalf of Montgomery Community Media, Mid-Atlantic Federal Credit Union, and Taylor Leonard Corporation, thank you again for joining us. Have a great day.